Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to talk about Starlink, my experience with it over the last two months, uh, what I think, whether it's good or not, and basically how it works. Woo! Got caught in the rain again! Oh, I've got the Starlink in the back of the pickup there, I'm going to be driving with it. Oh wow, getting really good speed today. So, in case you don't know anything about Starlink, what is it? It's an internet service provider uh, company started by Elon Musk. It's the same guy who owns SpaceX or the Tesla car company. And the idea or the end goal of Starlink is to be able to provide internet to anybody in the world, doesn't matter where you are. And that's because they're using satellite technology. Now, there's been obviously before satellite internet and all that stuff, but it was just basically not very reliable and, and also crazy expensive. So. This is supposed to be a bit more affordable. I'll talk about that also too. And maybe the first thing I'll kind of talk about is just kind of the equipment that you get. The, the version that I have is the RV version, or basically it's meant for people who travel in RVs or even if you're just in a car or whatever. Uh, I've used this in my mul multiple places that I've been like, for example, traveling just in my car, in an RV, camping, all that stuff. And I'm also using it up here on my uh, remote off-grid property. And that's kind of the main reason why I got this. My goal is to, to be able to essentially have a completely off-grid place to stay up here to do films, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do a, sort of like an off-grid uh, workshop, sort of a studio where we can also film some other cool projects and stuff like that. That's why I've also been working on the my solar golf cart slash camera platform vehicle. Uh, and, and a few other things and like I said a, a whole solar system and all that stuff that I'll be doing future videos about this as I develop sort of this property but like I said in this video I'm going to talk about the internet so obviously for my work at least I need internet because without internet um, I can't really do much this one cost me with like shipping and everything around $720 I think and it's going to vary depending on where you are where you're shipping it to and all that stuff so uh, you know, f don't quote me for all the exact prices because again, that, that and that also on top of that, it's actually going to change as times go on because the prices have actually increased. So that's how much I paid for the, uh, the, the hardware of it. And then I'm paying $135 a month for the service. Now I can suspend the service whenever I want. So it's a lot more affordable. And, uh, and again, I'm able to now for the first time have uh, internet in completely off-grid off remote areas where before it just wasn't, it wasn't possible on, the, on this kind of a budget, um, to be honest. Now, does that mean that that's the only option? Well, it depends again where you live. Uh, if I'm using this, or I have used it so far and tested it out, uh, mainly on the east coast of the United States, I'm gonna show you guys my different tests, different speeds, latency that I'm getting. Uh, and, uh, and sort of, you know, give you an idea of what you can expect. But obviously this will vary depending on where you are in the world. Like right now, North America and Europe, most of it uh, is gonna get service. Other parts of the world I know are slowly kind of, uh, I guess a lot of it is the regulatory, th you know, things that I have to go through, uh, but, but they're slowly accepting Starlink and it's sort of, you know, going out there, it's spreading. And actually Starlink has been gaining a lot of users as of lately. And that's one thing I'll tell you when it comes to the performance. So when I got this two months ago, I was averaging, it uh, doesn't matter where I was, whether I was in an officially open area or active area or in areas where it wasn't still fully active, um, I was pretty much getting the same speed. And then over the last basically like month, month and a half, I started noticing the speed slowly was like the average speeds were dropping as I was doing the, the, the tests while traveling with this. And then come to find out by reading different articles, <clears throat> by talking to different people on different forums, uh, I realized that it's because Starling actually has been getting a crazy number of people subscribing to their service. Um, so that's part of the reason why there's so many users joining and I guess they're just having problems keeping up with, um, with the speed, with all that congestion. Uh, now, something again that happened, and that was two, no, three days ago, was that with the, the latest firmware update, but also then I read in one, one interview with one of the, the uh, Starlink spokesperson, uh, they said that they've just activated like a few hundred more satellites uh, that they released into orbit. And they, by the way, have already like over 7,000 satellites just circling, circling the Earth. Plus now they're working on the version two satellites, which even Elon Musk himself 
uh, tweeted about and said that once those are uh, in orbit and active, then that's really going to dramatically speed up the, the service. Um, so like I said, so things can drastically change. Like I said, two months ago it was pretty good, then slowly it was, you know, the quality of the signal or the dependability was kind of going down. And then like two or three days ago, it again shut up and it's, it's been really good. The audio is okay, I don't have my mic today, but... Uh... In a park here where it's supposed to be fully available service and to power the whole thing, I just brought this little solar charger. Just gonna connect the cable. Now I can take this cable. Okay, I'm gonna set it up here. I'm a little bit further from the bench. So my whole setup is here. Let's power it. The antenna has already adjusted itself. And it says it's offline. It says it's searching for a signal. So let's see how long that takes. Let's see, it's 49 watts. Uh, it says it's gonna last for like eight and a half hours. Okay, so this is like four minutes, I think, later. It found the signal. Okay, let's do a speed test. So this is what we're getting right now. 96 millisecond latency, so not great. And this is technically in an area where it's supposed to be fully enabled. Now let's do a test on Google. Okay, here I'm getting much better. 130. And upload is... Yeah, upload is not great. You can see it's rotating over there. Right now the antenna kind of rotated itself. I guess it's still looking for a signal. Let me do another test up here. Okay, much better. So it is getting a clear signal now, I see. Yeah, it's showing me basically that here to the east and to the north there's too many trees and it says you may want to find a better spot. When you look at it from the point of view of the antenna, yeah, basically there to the north you have a little tree and here there's a tree, but I mean, there's still, most of the sky is open here. I don't know why it keeps on just pointing in that direction. As you can see, we are somewhere here in New Jersey, and it's still, basically, it says expanding in 2023, the area. And then I connect that, as you can see, it's turning around. Let me just use the Google uh, internet speed test. Like around 70 megabits download speed. But you see the upload is not as great. Uh, so here we are about four hours north of Toronto, Canada. This area has been just recently activated by Starlink. To the south we actually have a whole lake with no obstructions but of course the Starlink antenna wants to keep on looking to the north where unfortunately we do have a few trees. Uh, these are the kind of speeds we've been getting. Not great unfortunately. Uh, maybe when we move the antenna to a higher point or somewhere where it's not obscured by the trees uh, we'll get better signal. So I'm out here at the, at the property and uh, got the antenna up here. So I got power in my track right now going from the inverter. We got the router right there and the antenna right outside here. Getting 16 megabits download. Yeah, pretty decent now. So here I am at a campground in uh, Fort Wilderness, which is in the middle of uh, uh, Disney World in uh, Orlando. Unfortunately, because of all these trees, and it's there is a clear sky there, you know, bits here and there. So the service is not great. When a satellite passes by here, then we get the connection and it's great speed, but it only lasts about a minute and then it just drops when it goes behind the trees. Now to attach the antenna on my car so I can have signal while I'm traveling, now I'm not doing this permanent because uh, I travel with the trailer so when I do park the trailer then I usually put the antenna on top of the trailer but while I'm driving if I need internet connection I just put it on the back of the pickup here and I just simply attach the original stand that comes with it. You can buy these other ones that they have but for me it's good enough with just four screws uh, and then the board just gives it some weight. Now first I have to attach the cable, this goes through here. And then. Put it up on the stand like this. So as you can see, the antenna is kind of sitting inside here of the track, uh, and I can put some weight here on the two ends of the board just to kind of keep it a little bit more stable. But that's that's pretty much it. So 
So that's the kind of speed going here around the town. But the speeds, I mean, they vary, they do vary drastically because it depends on, I guess, where the antenna is facing and if you turn, sometimes that can slow it down. And the antenna, I notice, it still adjusts on the gimbal. But it does work. You get internet, you can stream YouTube and stuff like that. So as you can see, you can drive around and you can still get internet. Like you can have a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car. Pretty cool. Driving around, like right now, I just got 82 megabits per second. So this, this, you know, it really varies. It doesn't seem like the speed affects it. So it doesn't matter if I'm going 60 or over 60 or, or slower, it still uh, is working. The weather definitely does affect it. So right now we're in the middle of a storm. Woo, got caught in the rain again. Oh, I've got the Starling in the back of the pickup there. I'm going to be driving with it. Oh, wow, getting really good speed today. As you can see, the speed changes drastically depending on uh, basically the the weather. So just just a few minutes ago, it was much better. Now it's you see it dropped a lot, but uh, but it, it does work. So let's first talk about the price. Like I said, if, before in the past, if you wanted to get satellite internet, I mean, it was crazy expensive and it, and it sucked basically the speed. So this is the first, I would say, satellite internet service uh, that's affordable for most people. So the residential, if you get it, uh, again, don't quote me on it, check the prices and also with shipping and stuff will be different, but I believe it's like, like around $500, $600 for the equipment. Uh, I paid uh, 720 with everything shipping. And then monthly service for the residential one is, uh, I think it's $110, but again, the prices are changing. Uh, but I'll provide a link so you guys can check out. And by the way, this whole video is actually not sponsored by Starlink. They didn't send me the stuff. I bought it with my own money. Now in reality, uh, when, after like basically talking online with different people who got, for example, the residential plan, uh, it turns out that you can also move with it. Like when you're, uh, when you're gonna go on the Starlink website, they're gonna ask you what's your address or service address. And that can be different from your shipping address. So you fill in that info and that's actually how some people have been able to get around the wait list. Because for example, like in my area here in Southwest Florida, it's not technically active Starlink. So when I put in my address, it said that uh, the, the, the service is not available and they expect it to come online at sometime in 2023. Well, when I went to get the Starlink RV, then they send it to me and here I am trying it out and it works. Uh, and that's kind of what some people have done by ordering the residential uh, version of Starlink, just by providing a different address, like friends of theirs or whatever, and then, you know, having it shipped there uh, or for example, shipped still to their address. And then they would still use it at a, at a different address than the residential address and supposedly it works. Maybe in the future, I don't know, maybe Starlink is going to crack down on that. I don't know if they have the ability to do that, but because uh, technically, I guess the residential is only supposed to be used at the address that you registered with uh, versus, you know, the RV version, you're able to just travel with it and use it whatever you want. Now, the RV version, and that's actually one warning you'll get, is that you're not supposed to be using this while mobile, like while you're on the move. Originally, was I know there was a restriction with the FCC. Uh, they basically had some restrictions, but Starlink now has been approved for that. So you could technically use it, but the warranty still will not cover this equipment. So if you're, let's say, driving with it and you actually do mount it to the roof of your RV or your car or something, and let's say really high winds hit it or some, I don't know, debris or something off the road, and it gets damaged, then um, again, you're, you're not covered. You're gonna have to fork out the money to, to pay for the equipment again. If everything goes well, let's just put it that way, and Starlink keeps on uploading and activating more of those satellites, uh, then I do feel, I, I at least feel confident that it's gonna get better from here and not worse. Like I said, even though we had a bit of this dip with the speeds as more people were joining, but now with the addition of the latest uh, satellites being activated and the new firmware, it just seems like it uh, it sped up all of a sudden and it's back to its its normal speeds or maybe even better than, than what I was getting before. It's not the cheapest for every option, but I think the, the RV or the residential is still competitive. Now also keep in mind that like here in the US, rural areas, like kind of where I am right now, you're not gonna get the best cell phone sig signal. So if you're not getting a good cell phone signal, then you're not gonna be able to use your cell phone for data or some of these mobile uh, data plans that like, 
AT&T now and T-Mobile, they, they all offer them. And they actually offer them for cheaper than Starlink. Also, when you consider that the gear is drastically cheaper. Uh, usually it's like this little box. Sometimes you get it for free with different carriers. Some of them you pay like 50 or $100. So it is a lot cheaper. And from what I've heard, and I don't have any of those services, but from what I've heard, it is more reliable for the most part. Now, like I said, in, if you're in those few rural areas where that signal is still not available uh, from the, the local cell phone carriers, well, then I guess Starlink is your only option. And if that's the case, then, you know, if you're asking me, should you go for it? I guess if you don't mind spending, you know, the 500 or six, $700, whatever it is that's gonna come out for you, for the equipment, then yeah, I, I would say get it because afterwards, like I said, you can always pause it the plan and that's a cool thing. There's no contract or anything. You can use it and then you can just go on the app and deactivate it for the next month if you don't want to use it. You know, again, it's up to you. By the way, and again, reminding you, I did not get paid to say this and uh, and I don't make any money if you, you know, I'll provide the link to Starlink so you guys can check out the info. It's not affiliate link. I don't get any money from it. I, I don't even think they provide any affiliate links to anybody as far as I know. But I just thought this would be an interesting video because uh, like I'm kind of was hinting with some of my posts online. Uh, if you guys follow me on, on Instagram and, and uh, Twitter and stuff like that, you'll notice that I've been developing this off-grid property and my goal in the future is to have sort of a mobile place where like, like a remote place where I can stay and I can work in different projects, but also I have 10 acres up here so I can actually have like a uh, sound stage, a proper sound stage that's built in, but also a lot of space outdoors for doing, I don't know, car chasing, action, you know, gun shootouts and things like that. I mean, literally that we have no neighbors around here. I can do whatever, whatever I want. Now, the thing is that it's completely off grid and I kind of in a way like it, to be honest, like I'm, I'm developing an off grid power system and water I already have and all these things. Uh, that is just gonna make, I think, this property a lot cooler and then, uh, you know, uh, a lot more fun just knowing the fact that we are not rel reliant on any exterior things, you know, power or anything. We're completely self-sufficient here and we can do, we have freedom to do a lot of cool things here. Uh, and I'm hoping to be able to start inviting you guys to the property if you wanna uh, shoot projects with me in different films, tests, things like that. And maybe start like a little, I don't know, off-grid filmmaking academy or something. I don't know, we'll see. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think, what are some of the possibilities that I could do up here. And, uh, and I guess that's it for this video. If you guys have more questions about Starlink, definitely leave them in the comment section. But also, if you guys have already used Starlink and you have personal experience, please, please share it in the comment section below because it, it's gonna help me. It's also gonna help other people who are maybe considering going this route. So let's say whether it's good things you discovered or bad things about them, anything like that, or any new updates, please, uh, just leave those in the comment section below. Anyways, my name is Tom once again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.